all right me it is like two days after or the day after he finished reading Sam of the Fury and I've just finished reading the Aurora County All-Stars by Deborah Wiles uh published in 2007 I believe uh Aurora County All-Stars is a book that centers around baseball but it's certainly much more than that um it was one of my books that I probably read the maybe the most when I was in elementary school um as can be told by the way this book looks it's got a huge cutout it's got a whole bunch of weathered pages um what ended up happening while I was going to return the book at one point I dropped it in a whole bunch of snow ruined a whole bunch of the pages uh and so the library had me buy it um which you know good on them but that's why I bow into the book now um which is good right it's it's fun to have those stories um the book right it's not really I don't think necessary to touch on a lot of the actual major plot points right because it's a pretty standard um I mean, kind of like children's sports kind of layout, right? Of where we're coming, overcoming adversity, we're dealing with new challenges along the way, we're dealing with, you know, the possible breakup of friendships and the reuniting of them, right? Uh, so we're dealing with all of that, right? The big thing here, though, is we're looking at a kid named House Jackson. House Jackson, 12 years old. Um, this book presumably takes place 80s and 90s, right? Um, and we're also in poor r rural southern Mississippi, right? Um, so, just generally kind of important that we're looking at that, right? Because it kind of, I think, informs... That informs some of the decisions that are made in terms of, like, just from an economic level, right? Of where it's, like... You know, this baseball game is supposed to happen, but the the families are effectively seeing this as also an opportunity for their kids to be shown as bigger than what might normally happen in this community, right? Because I, the biggest issue that, that happens here is this baseball game gets played um, you know, the county's too small, the city's too small to really hold a little league team, so they only get to play one game a year against a neighboring town that's in the same situation. And they hold the game every year. House Jackson, character that we follow throughout all of it, um, could not play last year because he had his arm broken by a girl named Finesse and finesse is all into theater and house breaks his arm in a theatrical performance he can't pitch next year comes around it's some centennial event i don't remember if it's bicentennial or centennial but um what's happening is they want to hold a pageant instead of just a normal dance and the reason they won't hold a pageant is because the one person who has ever really come out of this town um, has become an actor and he is paying for a new stage to be put into the school, right? He's paying for basically an overhaul of the entire um, theater of the school, right? And so, you know, he is, basically what they're doing is like, hey, we got to put on this pageant on the new, on the new stage because he's going to be here for one day and he's the only he's the one person that's come out of this town and made it big right but it's happening on july 4th at the same time the game normally played so now we have the whole team upset along with house that you know this this is now interfering with, the, with their game for the second year in a row as well as uh the pageant is being directed by the girl that broke house's arm the previous year right so we're dealing with all of that. We're also dealing with the fact that every kid under the age of 12 in the county gets signed up for this pageant because, well, 
you know, you get a chance to impress the one big person that came out of your small town, well, obviously parents are going to jump at that opportunity. Um, so that's all that. Um, but what's also happening at the same time is House is dealing with effectively reconciling with death, right? Um, what we see at the very beginning is that House, while his arm has been broken and he can't really play baseball, has been asked to read to um, a dying man, right? And effectively help take care of him in that sense. And the problem with that is, well, the old man uh, is an urban legend and all the young kids hate him and they all think that he's a baby eater and there's ghosts and whatnot. And so what ends up happening is House is the one that is there when uh, Norwood's death occurs, right? And so House is, is reconciling with that. He's reconciling with the fact that he didn't actually really know, know Norwood, even though he spent a year reading to him. Um, as House eventually finds out, right, is that it's not just that Norwood was this person who was a friend of the family. Um, Norwood was actually the, the, the godfather to his mother. Now, the other issue that gets involved here is that House saw his mother die when, when he was six, six years ago. Um, and so, right, a lot of this book is reconciling with death. And what does it mean? What does it mean to lose a life? And what does it mean to lose a life that you didn't really get to know all that well? Um, I think this is actually a really good book to, to kind of help teach and like, and at least get to, to like work through some of those thoughts with kids of that age, uh, you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, even, um, about reconciling with, you know, what does it mean to lose a person? You know, how do we uphold a person's honor and memory and whatnot? Um, through these conversations, we also get to learn that uh, Norwood was a very, very good ball player, according to a guy named Pip. Pip is an African-American man who is about the same age as Norwood. He is also the great-grandfather of Finesse, who's the girl that broke um, House's arm. Um, but we learned that both Pip and Norwood played baseball together, but eventually the issue of color came up because Norwood was white, Pip African-American. And through that, even though Norwood was apparently a fantastic player. He gave up baseball at the age of 12 because he was so upset that he couldn't play with his best friend anymore. So we learned that. And then comes what is actually the big thing that the book deals with, which is it uses and references um, Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, a huge amount. Right. And really, that's what this book is. Right. It is this incredibly optimistic look at what America could be. I'm actually going to probably move this up to the front, but really, that's what this book is. Right. This book is this very hopeful, optimistic viewpoint of the kind of concepts that Leaves of Grass and Walt Whitman kind of push forward, right? Which is that inherently we are, we are born, we live, we die, and hopefully we find some love in there. That's a quote from the book. Um, I believe it's also, I believe it's also in reference to things, something that Whitman said off the top of my head, but I know for certain that's in the book, right? But in general, this concept that like 
the the issues that are being put forward in American society, right, if we inherently decide to look at them as we are all human, we all need to treat each other with respect, no matter who we are, well then, things are better, right? And we actually see this occur throughout the book, right? Except instead of it being a race issue, right, it becomes a gender issue, right? One of the big things that, that occurs is, you know, the Aurora County All-Stars can't really play because they only, they have eight players, right? And so there is a 11-year-old girl named Ruby who wants to play and has been playing with a whole bunch of the kids, just not on the diamond, right? Is that she, she plays catcher, she hits, she plays catch with a whole bunch of the kids that are on the team, just not on the actual field, right? And it is House who, after kind of getting some of the bolt in wisdom, um, you know, says, okay, yeah, let's play, right? And it's, you know, eventually him who goes through House that kind of confirms and, and gets everything ready and encourages everyone to go along with it, right? It's also House who comes up with the idea that they're going to do the pageant and the ba and baseball at the same time, in which they're going to, you know, in order for all of this to work, for both these things to happen, they're going to move the pageant from the new stage to the baseball field, and they're going to perform it in between innings. Um, luckily, this ends up working out because as <laughs> as we get to you know act of God, um, the stage is designed to be is the stage as it is designed is too big for the school, and so they had to you know redo a whole bunch of it, and so you know they have to perform it somewhere else. Well then why don't we just have it on the baseball field, right? Um, so that's that, that's all that. Um, really it, it is one of those big things of like, this is what, right? This is like, once again, like optimistic America at its core, right? Um, this is the, the, the hopefulness that, you know, we can and we will continue to allow people to have access and rights to things, right? And that we're not going to push them away simply because we don't like the way that they exist, right? Um, that's all that, that's all that. We have this great, wonderful scene at the end, right? Uh, House's arm is being destroyed, um, right? But he's constantly thinking about two things. He thinks about the Sandy Koufax game in which he basically pitched until his arm was completely black. Um, and we're all, he's also thinking back to Norwood, right? And Norwood giving up baseball at 12 years old because of something that he believed in, right? And so, right, we have this great, wonderful game that's happening, and we basically have House making the decision that he is going to destroy his arm because it's something that he believes in. Now, is that the smart decision? No, he's 12 years old, right? But also, right, it's just one of these, you know, great parallels that happens. Um, And then the very ending is with Pip, right? House can't swing a bat anymore. He can't pitch anymore. Pip, 83, 80, whatever year old Pip, um, basically comes in to take the last at bat to pinch hit for House. He hits a home run at 80 something years old, right? It's the first, it would have been presumably the first time he's played baseball since he was forced to stop. Um, 
Oro County wins. Everyone's excited. Everyone's happy, right? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, like the, the story itself, right, is background to me. Because really this, this book is about this, this really the, the concepts are being put forward by Walt Whitman, which is, you know, we have the opportunity to express ourselves and work and live in an American society in which everyone gets to be present, right? Um, and denying that is denying what America is. Um, so that's all that. That's all that. This is also, you know, because of the focus on Walt Whitman here in Leaves of Grass, I know off the top of my head, I read Leaves of Grass and I didn't particularly like it. I think I'm going to go back and reread it and then, you know, do an amend amended um, addendum. I don't know what I was going to say, amendment, addendum to it. Um, I'm also going to do an addendum to uh, Macbeth because I taught that and so I feel like I should talk more about it, but that's that. That was Your Work County All-Stars by Deborah Wiles. Yeah.